Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Punting in Popper, the show where I do my best to not absolutely punt and stumble my way through some popper games here on MTGO. Uh, I'm your host, Gord, and without any further ado, let's get into the deck list, which quick uh, shout out going out to our, our commenter who suggested uh, playing a Selesnia deck. Uh, so today the deck is going to be Selesnia Exalted. Uh, so green-white, uh, looking to pump up some creatures with the Exalted ability, and then we're also playing a little bit of a uh, Persist 1-1 counter combo uh, inside the deck as well. So let's get into the list here. First up with our mana base, we are playing 21 lands, so two Blossoming Sands. That is our tap land for both colors that gains us a life. Uh, we're playing three Evolving Wilds to help us uh, crack Zack, find ourselves a basic, help us fix a bit. Uh, we have one Kabira Crossroads. Uh, it enters tap, but we do gain two life, so it's a decent little uh, little chunk of life there. And with another card we have in deck, we can uh, replay it a couple times. Um, we also have one Secluded Step, just for a little bit of added card draw should we need it. And then the rest we're just using some forests and some planes for a total of 21 land cards. Now over in the one drop slot, uh, first up is our Akrasen Squire, which is a one mana human soldier, 1-1. One, one, uh, that has the Exalted ability, and Exalted is, uh, if a creature would attack alone, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, and the really nice thing about Exalted is that it actually stacks, so if we have multiple creatures out with uh, instances of Exalted, our creature that's uh, attacking is going to get plus one, plus one for each instance of Exalted we have on the board. So you can imagine us getting some fairly big creatures that way. Um, next up is Benevolent Bodyguard. This is just a little bit of uh, just kind of a safety valve we have built into the deck here. So a 1 mana, 1-1 one, one human cleric. We can sack it and target creature we control gains protection from the color of our choice till end of turn. So help us swing in for damage, keep our stuff safe, etc. Uh, we have four copies of Rancor. This is a very popular enchantment. I'm sure you've heard of it. It is uh, 1 mana for an aura. Enchant creature and enchanted creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and has trample which is pretty good for one mana. But then uh, if Rancor is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we actually get to put it back into our hand. So if our creature is uh, taken care of, bounced, killed, anything like that, we do get the Rancor back. So that's pretty good for us. Uh, next up in the two drop slot here, First things first, we have Journey to Nowhere. We're familiar with this card by now as well. It is our two mana uh, removal. It ETBs and we get to exile a uh, creature underneath Journey. So. Uh, next up, Core Skyfisher. This is just a, a good two mana, uh, two drop. We, it's, a, it's a core soldier, 2-3 with flying. When it ETBs, we have to return a permanent we control to our hand, which sometimes can slow us down, but is also uh, can uh, you know help us out replay stuff such as our, our Kabira Crossroads here, gain some more life. Um, then we have Sungrace Pegasus, so this is a 2-drop, it's a Pegasus 1-2 with Flying and Lifelink, so if this is the creature we're getting in for uh, for damage with our Exalted Triggers and our Rancor and such, uh, this is going to help us gain a lot of life too, kind of uh, extend our own clock up a bit, uh, so that helps us out quite a bit. Uh, we also are playing a Kasali Pride Mage here. So this is uh, the last part of our Exalted package. It is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Cat Wizard with the Exalted, and it has pay 1, sack the Pride Mage, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So we do have some uh, main deck artifact and enchantment hate in the deck as well, which is nice. Um, and it being the Selesny Colors green-white, we do have to make sure that our, our mana base is a little bit more uh, fluid and can help us find uh, those two colors. So that's why we're running the, the Evolving Wilds and such. So this is a, a really good card in the deck. Um, gonna, gonna do a lot of work for us, I'm sure. Uh, our second sort of package we're running within the deck is um, the, the Persist 1-1 one, one counter synergy stuff. So first up is a safe hold elite this is a two mana two two elf scout with the persist ability so uh if this creature would die and it had no counters on it we get to bring it back with a minus one minus one counter on it so if it dies it comes back as a is a one one essentially um and and to to kind of keep that loop going we're playing travel preparations so we have uh it's two mana sorcery and put a one one counter on up to each of two target creatures so if one of our persist creatures comes back and it has the minus one minus one counter on it, if we travel preparations, we put a one one counter on it. it they the counters uh, cancel each other out, and it goes back to just being uh, a two two with persist. So if that creature would die again, it's going to come back 
as a minus one minus one counter on it as a one one uh, so we get our creature back we're going to get more uses out of our creatures and this even has flashback for one and a white so we'll get a couple uses out of it for every time we play it so you can kind of see that synergy there a and on the same same note that we're playing one copy of aquastrand spider so this is a two mana zero zero spider mutant but it has graph two so when this creature enters the battlefield, it will uh, it'll enter with two one one counters on it, and then whenever another creature enters the battlefield, uh, we can move a one one counter from our spider to one of our other creatures. So for example, we have a safe hold elite on board. We have a spider. Our safe hold elite dies, comes back as a uh, two two with one minus one minus one counter on it. Uh, the ETB will trigger the aqua strand spider, and then we can move a a counter from the spider over to the safe hold elite, bring it back as it is, right? So that keeps our, it's it's essentially doing the same thing as a travel prep. We get to move around some 1-1 one -one counters. So nice little uh, extra slot in there. And then up on the uh, the high end of our curve here, three mana, we are playing a Rend Claw Trow. This is a 2-2 two -two troll with Wither and pers Persist. So uh, Wither, it deals damage in minus one, minus one counters. Um, is it, it, it's sort of relevant, but not really in the deck. It does have persist though, so we can do uh, the same thing we're doing with the safe hold elite and the, the one one counters. So, a very aggressive deck looking to swing in with some big creatures, and we're using a lot of pumps and getting some life, which was re requested uh, out of the deck. Um, we're not going to uh, uh, actually use spells to to pump up our creatures. We're going to be using that exalted uh, trigger, and then I mean travel preparations, but that's kind of its own thing. So yeah, that's the main deck. Let's take a quick little peek over here at the sideboard. Uh, first up, Relic of Progenitus. This uh, hates on graveyards. Uh, very 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 good card. Bring it in in most matchups. Uh, we are playing a fair amount of artifact and enchantment hate, even though we do have some main deck. Sometimes we don't want to be sacrifi sacrificing the pride mage. So I have two copies of Leave No Trace. So this is destroy target enchantment and each other enchantment that shares a color with it. Uh, this really hates on boggles and, and other decks like that. Um, dust to dust, where we can exile a couple artifacts. Now um, naturalize for two mana, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment. So yeah, a lot of hate in there. And then we're also running a copy, two copies that is, of Holy Light, which is non-white creatures get minus one, minus one till end of turn. So that's our, our board clearer. We have a Guardian of the Guild pack, protecting from monocolor, just a, just a nice include. And then this thing can get pretty big with some exalted uh, prismatic strands. We can fog off some damage and then we can uh, Flash it back just by tapping a white creature. You can survive a couple extra turns. Standard Bearer, make our opponents target it instead of their own stuff. Obsidian Acolyte for the black uh, deck matchup. And then Crimson Acolyte for the red deck matchup. So that's the deck. Let's uh, get into some games here and see if we can stomp some people out with uh, Selesnia. All right, punting and popper with some Selesnia Exalted. And we win the die roll. We will play first. And uh, one land, I don't think this hand will work, unfortunately. We're really banking on drawing a white source to have anything at all. It feels a little bit too risky. I think we'll mulligan it. Okay, this hand's a little bit slower, unfortunately, but uh, it's not bad. I think we'll keep it. I think we'll end up throwing the trow on the bottom here, so yeah. The opponent's mulliganing down to five, so that's that's good for us. Six doesn't feel so bad. But we'll play Evolving Wilds, and we'll crack it for a Plains. Uh, we'd much rather have the untapped White Source right now to get our Squire out early, but we'll just have to make do with what we have. Pwn plays an Island, okay. And Fairy Miscreant, okay. It's probably going to be jamming out a few of those to draw some cards. Alright, well, we will untap. we draw another Force, which isn't awful. Let's go ahead, play a Safe Hold. Next turn we can get both exalted creatures out and start swinging. And then we do have a piece of removal in the back, should we need it. We'll pass like that. One plays a second island. Okay, they're gonna hit us. I wonder if this will be ninja then. Nope. No ninjutsu. Turns out a preordain, okay. And then another fairy. Alright, so they'll draw a card. Alright, we draw a core sky fisher. Which is interesting. Let's go ahead, we'll play our forest, and uh, we'll run out the pride mage here, I think. Unfortunately, we can't run out both, but we'll go ahead and attack. 
Get him for three. All right, and we'll pass like that. We can't hold this up to blow up any uh, artifacts or enchantments opponent might have. Um, probably not going to be super relevant in this matchup, though, by the looks of things. Someone's going to attack for two, for sure. Ah, oh, here's Ninja. Sure, we have to take that. They draw. They don't hit a land, though. Travel prep isn't awful here. Uh, we kind of wait for, kind of want to wait for something to happen here before we do that. Um, I wonder if we just journey the ninja away now. Make it less of a problem for us. That might be the, the right play, so let's journey to nowhere. We can't really block it effectively yet. We could travel prep and then block it, but I don't know. So yeah, let's journey, grab the ninja. We'll get him for three. Now that we have the travel prep, I just kind of want to see how long we can keep the safe hold elite around. That value alone might be enough for us. When it snaps, going to put Prime Image back to our hand. Okay. Untaps two lands. Thank heavens a Mystic Sanctuary is banned. <laughs> oh, man. Getting that back twice would stink. Opponent gets in for one. There's another Miscreant, sure. They'll draw another card. Okay, we draw Rancor, which is actually pretty reasonable here. So let's Sully Pride Mage. Now let's just slap a Rancor on the safe old Elite. Brings our clock up quite a bit. Opponent takes five, down to nine. Okay. Opponent does have seven cards. We're going to preordain. Open they're just having mana troubles then. Doing a lot of digging. So one bottom, one top. So they found something they were looking for. All right. Yeah, we got there. Nice. Let's go to sideboards. All right, so after sideboards, uh, opponent's deck is looking mostly mono blue, and even if they are splashing red for the uh, the, the Scred variant, which it doesn't look like, didn't see any snow-covered mountains, uh, Guardian can can get through that, so Guardian the Guild Pack, good for against the monocolored decks. And then we're going to bring in two copies of Holy Light, uh, so that non-white creatures get minus one, minus one till end of turn, hopefully wipe our, our opponent's uh, fairy board uh, right up to lunch there. So uh, we're going to go down one core Sky Fisher, and then uh, two Rancloth Shrouds, uh, you know, they're just kind of filling up those those CMC slots. So, yeah, let's run it like that. All right, we got safe hold, elite. We have some removal. We have a ranker, but I don't think we have much else going on. So I don't know if this hand is uh, is really worth it. It's kind of risky. Mm, but we do get to get a safe hold, elite out early. Can put a ranker on it, and then we can remove our opponent's stuff. Uh, we're up a game. Ah, oh, man. Hard choices, hard choices. I think we keep... One plays an island and a miscreant. You got it. We draw Pegasus, which isn't awful. We still need an exalted uh, creature here. Um, but we will crack the wilds, get our white source. Pegasus does block fairies, though, so... Play second island. Gets in for one. Okay, well, they might just be holding up Counterspell here, so... Well, let's go for the Pegasus anyways, see what happens. Yeah, it looks like they had it. Oh, it's a Sprite. Yep, sure. Not a whole lot we can do about that, so... We get countered past the turn. Opponent gets in for two. Leaves open what looks to be Counter Magic once again. Well, let's play ourselves. Forest. Let's just try to journey to nowhere. Don't want to risk losing a threat here, I don't think, just to counter. Sure. Another sprite. Pass the turn. We should have played the tap land, so that was a little bit of a punt that way. But. I'm just going to stay on the aggro control plan here. And yeah, we'll go down to 14. You're drawing another Rancor. Well, let's play Blossoming Sands. Gain a life. Then let's just try to journey to nowhere one more time. 
Counterspell, sure. Opponent ponders, okay. Chooses not to shuffle, so found something they liked. Gets in with all three. We're down to 12. And a Delver, okay. Opponent is tapped out, thankfully. We draw a secluded step. So let's go white and green for a safe hold elite. Let's put a ranker on it. Let's cycle secluded step right now. Draw guardian, which is interesting. Okay, pass the turn. Yeah, I guess we should have waited to throw the ranker on it. Should have drew with, uh, should drew with safe hold, or should have drew with this clue to step first. But. Pwn's likely gonna flip here? Yeah. They've been setting up their draws, and they have counter spell. Ooh, yuck. Four, five, six. They got six damage here. Yeah, we might just be out of this one. If we can draw one of our, uh, removal spells if they tap out one of our sweepers, uh, that would be good, but we'll have to wait and see. I doubt opponents going to tap out for anything here, though, now, unfortunately. Oh, going to get greedy and go for the ninja. So the draw card. And we don't draw the sweeper, unfortunately, and... I think we're just dead in the air, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're just dead in the air, so we'll scoop it up. Alright, I don't think we're going to switch up more sideboard-wise. I think we just need to uh, keep a better hand this time, or find some better starting cards. So we'll run it like this. We do get the play, which is what we want to do with this deck. Um, uh, again, this one might be just a little bit too land-heavy. We might be waiting too long to play our spells. We do get big bodies in the air to block, though, with the core Skyfishers. We'll keep it. You can yell at me in the comments. Blossoming Sands, gain a life. Pass turn. Opponent plays an island. Has the ponder. They don't shuffle, so they found something they liked. So we have Squire, which isn't bad. Let's go Forest. White, green. Play Sky Fisher. We'll pick up the Blossoming Sands. Pass the turn. Opponent plays Preordain. One top, one bottom. Finding lots they like. They have another preordain. Okay, so they're gonna look another deep yet. One top, one bottom again. Alright, we draw another evolving wild. Well, we'll play a planes. We'll play a squire. And we'll get him for three with our sky fisher. Pass the turn. This one has third island. Plays very miscreant. Ooh, we're drawing more lands. Well, let's go to combat. We'll tag with a core sky fisher. When it takes it. Play a planes. Let's try to play a sky fisher. That'll get countered. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we should have played the trow. I was thinking about it. I promise I was. Uh, okay. Darn it. Yeah, that really stinks. Hmm. Yeah, if we would have played the trial there, the spell setter sprite wouldn't have been able to counter. Oh well, we know for next time. We have four cards in hand, but three of them are the lands, unfortunately. One's thinking about it. One's gonna attack. Alright. Well, we can't block. We'll take two. And Spire Golem, okay. So that blocks us for a while. They are tapped out. Ooh, but we can get rid of it. That's nice. Okay. Let's play Devolving Wilds, and we'll crack it to thin the deck. Yeah, I know deck thinging isn't technically a thing, but we've drawn a lot of lands. Let's get them out of there. Um, and then we'll go Journey to Nowhere. Let's grab the Spire Golem. I think we'll stay aggro. I don't think we need to play defense quite yet. Get in for another three. I'm down to 11. I 
Oh, opponent scoops it up. Yes, we got there. Woo. Nice. Beaten mono blue. All right, punting in Popper with some Selesnia Exalted. And I think this hand is a little bit too uh, a land heavy. We are on the draw, but uh, I just I don't have any early game stuff going on. So I think we have to mulligan. Okay, this is a little bit more reasonable. We can keep this. Let's put one of our sky pitchers on the bottom. Wants to play an island. And a preordain, okay. Okay, we draw ourselves a travel preparations, which isn't bad. We will just run out of planes and play our squire. Pass it like that. One plays an island. All right, we drop Blossoming Sands. Interesting. Let's go ahead, get him for two. All right. Let's go forest and let's try to cast our Sky Fisher. Might get countered here. It resolves, which is nice. We're going back some lands, unfortunately. Uh, I guess we could pick up the Squire. But then we don't have anything else to play next turn anyways. Um, yeah, we'll pick up a land. So we can't play our Trow as quickly as we would like to. A little off curve that way. But we do have the Skyfisher down now. Okay, so black. Pump has a swamp. So more of a blue-black Delver style, hey? We're going to see Agony Warp already. Mind Rot. Okay, so we're going to discard two. Ooh, targeting themselves. I see. Interesting. This is like a dredge builder or something. There's a Ulamog's Crusher. Very nice. Oh, they discarded an Angler. Okay. Wow. Nice. We want to try to get in fast here. Uh, we'll play Forest. Play Ranker, I think. And then we'll go to combat and get in five here. I think next turn we might actually just travel prep. I think we just want to get in for as much damage as we can. Over like a Ren Claw. Could be wrong though. We'll see what opponent does. Mortuary Mire. We put Tart Creature. Okay. Okay. So which one's it gonna be? You're gonna put a creature on top. You're gonna grab the Angler, okay. I'm a little less scared of the Angler than I am the Crusher immediately, so. Annihilator 2 does bad things to us, so I'd rather see an angler on top. Oh, they choose not to use the ability. Okay, interesting. They're going to exhume. Oh. <laughs> they get Crusher. <laughs> okay. So we got to get in fast, fast now. We draw Benevolent Bodyguard. Okay. So what's the best way to ooh, get this? We wanna, we need to have permanents to sacrifice. So let's play a forest. Let's play benevolent bodyguard. Let's play travel preparations here and here. We can present lethal next turn if we do this right. So okay, we'll attack with the sky fisher. Getting for six. So All right. We can flashback this travel prep and uh, get in for lethal next turn, as long as we keep this core around. And we need two lands for the travel prep. Opponent's going to attack. Yep, has to attack. Well, we will sacrifice Benevolent Bodyguard and a Forest. We will take a full eight to the face. What does opponent have in hand, though? Opt? Okay, so they're going to take another look. That's fair. Uh, they draw the card on top. Agony Warp doesn't do it. They play an island, two cards in hand. Okay, they see it. Woo! <laughs> All right, let's go to sideboards. All right, so after sideboards, we're going to go down two Relic Progenitus just to uh, hit on the opponent's graveyard because that seems to be their plan. Uh, and then we're going to bring in a, one Obsidian Acolyte just as a, you know, kind of a nice blocker for Gourmet stuff. Uh, we'll go down two Ranclaw Trials and a Core Skyfisher, and we'll try it like that. So we only have one land here, unfortunately. We need to draw a white source, but we do have Relic. Which seems pretty good. I'm going to risk it. I think Relic is good enough. 
in this matchup. He plays an island. We do draw the planes. Nice. Okay. Let's go planes. Oh, I'm so tempted. Let's just let's just try to slam a relic. No logic not. Perfect. Alright. Pass the turn. This hand looks really good. Someone plays a swamp. Okay, we get crossroads. Let's play a forest. Let's play a Sungrace Pegasus. Pass the turn. And it's going to be Jukabog. Exile our yard. Which there is nothing, so that's fine. I'm passing. Okay. We draw a squire. Well, let's play crossroads. Gain some life. Now let's just run out of squire. And then we can leave a mana open to uh, crack this relic if we have to. And we'll get in for two with the Pegasus and gain a bit of life there as well. We're not going nearly as fast this time around, but uh, we do have some backup here, which feels a little bit nice to have this safety valve and relic kind of built in. So yeah, we'll pass. We do have a journey to hate on a, a crusher that does come down as well, which is pretty ideal. And they're going to Chainer's Edict. Okay, well, we'll do the Squire. Okay, that doesn't feel too bad. We should have done this on the end of their turn, but oh well. We'll play Planes. We'll play Squire, or try to at least. So they're going to deprive it, get back their Bajookabog. Okay, well that's fine. We're trying to bait out the counter, because now we're going to play Pride Mage. Go to combat, attack. Bajookabog, okay. Gonna exile our squires. That's fine, we don't have a way of getting them back as it is. Alright. We'll make them exile a card from their graveyard. We won't miss it this time. They exiled the bribe, makes sense. We draw Skyfisher, which I don't hate. So, we'll go to combat. And. Oh, we clicked through combat. Great. Nice one. Okay. Of course, Guy Fisher. Ugh, Moto. I guess it's my fault, but uh, uh I've been playing Arena <laughs> recently, and it just... Alright, so we'll pick up the Crossroads. Well, I guess we'll float white. Pick up the Crossroads. Play the Crossroads. Pass the turn. We still have our safety valve and relic. But yeah, that hurts. That really hurts. Forbidden Alchemy. Top four cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand. Rest in your graveyard. Okay. So, Muddle the Mixture, Riverwinder, Opt in the Yard. Seeing that combat stuff was huge. Huge, huge. They're going to zoom. So what are they going to grab? Riverwinder. Uh... Yeah, let's crack it. Draw Aquastrand Spider. And another Pride Mage. Okay, well... Go to combat. Attack with everything this turn. Let's play... Aqua Strand Spider, pass the turn. Yeah, we would have. Oh, okay. Got to move past it, but we could have opponent down to eight right now, which means we could actually present lethal next turn. But now we're a turn behind, so that really stinks. But we might get through it yet. Well, she's passing here, so Let's see what we draw. Evolving Wilds. We'll play Evolving Wilds. Go to combat. Attack with everything. Opponent down to four. Oh, we had it that turn. Dang it. I mean, they probably have counters, but... Oh, man. That was another that was another silly one. Not paying attention. Not, not doing our counts right. We did it the first time properly, but... We'll grab another green source here. Uh, and... Yeah, we'll just... We'll just hope. We'll just hope we have it. Opponents in a preordain. Okay... I don't think there's a wipe in the format that kills all of our creatures here. Not an opponent's deck, anyways. 
Yeah, we got there. <laughs> so despite some of our some of our earlier punts, we were still able to get there through just the the beatdown, which I guess is what Green White is it was good for. So nice, nice. I'm liking this deck a lot. So how did we do this time around with some Selesnia Exalted? And I gotta say, I really like this deck. It's a whole lot of fun. You know, it, the, the deck gets in quick, fast. Uh, we get the creature beatdown win that uh, the uh, the inner Timmy I have is always, always happy to to, to do. Just uh, crush uh, your opponent with some creatures. And, and, and the deck did just that. So uh, first up against Mono Blue Fairies, which in its own right is a very popular, uh, good deck, uh, very good at controlling its opponents on curve with the Spell Sutter sprites and, and card advantage. And uh, we were just able to outrace them, you know, and, and put them into some precarious situations. We had the flying threats uh, that were, you know, able to get us there. We did lose the, the second game uh, of that whole matchup, but that was on me for keeping, I think, a poor hand. Um, but either way, you know, we got there. We, <laughs> we beat Mono Blue Fairies, which which feels great. And then uh, game two, I gotta say, opponent's uh, Demir Reanimator deck was super cool. They had, what was it, turn three Ulamog's Crusher, which would have absolutely ruined us. But uh, we had a really, really great opener in that game, and we were able to present lethal fairly quickly with a very uh, buffed up Core Sky Fisher, which... Having the flying threats helped us in the in the, the fairies matchup too, uh, just because flying is probably some of the best evasion you can have in the format, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, and then second game against the reanimator deck, uh, we kept the one lander with the relic, and that was a very very clutch. Uh, card for us in the matchup and then we were able to luckily enough draw the the white source we needed immediately after that so yeah relic kind of as the sideboard tech just really won us that game uh but opponent's deck was super cool um i kind of want to try reanimator deck next i don't know what do you guys think um but as far as uh, any changes i think i would make the sideboard obviously needs some work um it's okay, like our sideboard tech helped us out, but we have a little bit too much enchantment and uh, artifact hate, considering that we are playing uh, the Pride Mage in the main deck. So definitely cut a few of these cards out, maybe the leave and then maybe one naturalize. I'm not sure, what do you guys think? What What is the best kind of uh, sideboard to go through here? Obviously I don't have a whole lot of green in here, so maybe there's uh, something in green that I should be playing. But uh, other than that, I think the main deck is really, really cool. Um, I had a lot of fun with this deck. Uh, thank you so much for suggesting uh, a Selesnya deck with with some some pumps and some some life gain. We we had it. <laughs> uh, so I just want to thank you all once again for joining me here on Punting and Popper. Let me know how you uh, thought this game or these games went. How you thought the deck was. Uh, what you might be interested in seeing next. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. So until next time, thanks again.